Welcome to Hello Pepper's Glowworms, a channel dedicated to hot chili peppers and coldly glowing glowworms. <coughs> I have been attempting to create a small fruited super hot chili pepper for quite some years now. Oh my, I think it's even a decade now. I'm getting old. <coughs> well, um, but now I think it is finally going somewhere and not just somewhere but actually where i want it to go um, it started back then with a cross between carioca and buccellocchia and um, i wasn't quite happy uh, with the result uh, it was nearly always uh, i ended up with something like this this uh, seems to have been the dead end often which is basically um, either a carioca that's too big or a buccellocchia that's um, not hot enough. And um, somehow I always ended up with something like this. A little, little, but not little enough orange fruit with no special features, broadly speaking. But now this is changing. I am currently working on two breeding lines, or let's say uh, two and uh, one third, <laughs> um, you'll see. And um, I think now on both of those lines I'm starting to see results that are quite promising. First off, we have the Cariolochia Screepa Strain Zero. And uh, this is a breeding line where I introduced a um, Trinidad Scorpion Maruga Red and later on a Carolina Reaper. And um, there were some shenanigans involved and some uh, mistakes, but happy mistakes. Um, you can see this in, in, in other videos. But anyway, now I have reached the F2 generation of the Cariolochia Screeper Strain Zero. And as you know, our good old pal Mendel uh, has told us that this is the interesting generations where the traits are rearranged. And um, I have six individuals, six specimens of this breeding line, which I planted last year, late in the season. So they only started to produce fruits this year, in 2021. And um, I haven't been quite uh, thorough with the taste testing and things like that and analyzing each specimen, but I think I have my two favorites already, the um, number three and the number four. And um, they are, well, number three is uh, small and hot and um, not that tasty and number four is um, has a bit larger fruits but is um, uh, very very hot and I think uh, this is something I can work with. I had all six specimens of Cariolochia Screeper Strain Zero uh, outside for the summer and I took them in uh, relatively late in autumn and uh, the plants did not look very happy after that and uh, I harvested uh, just after that the bulk of the fruits and uh, therefore the fruits uh, are not that nice looking either. Um, some of them weren't quite ripe but I picked them off anyway and some of them were already damaged by the uh, cold uh, weather that we have here in the northern parts of Germany. Uh, but anyway, it should be enough for seeds and that's the most important part. And the other breeding line that I'm quite excited about is also F2 generation, so the uh, very interesting one. And it is a cross between the uh, a Carolina Reaper chocolate and the Ahi Charapita. So... Um, a similar, similar starting point as uh, back then, uh, almost a decade ago, uh, but uh, with especially tasty uh, fruits and uh, one especially hot, uh, super hot variety. 
I have called this breeding line Ahi Charipa and the F1 generation was uh, not very hot but uh, especially tasty I uh, have to say and, and now it's the F2 generation and I also uh, planted them very late in the season but this year however in case of the Ahi Charipa F2 one plant uh, started to produce some fruits actually in uh, October I started to notice some nice little uh, baby fruits uh, the other plants uh, flowered quite abundantly but um, no fruits were produced uh, you know the days uh, already started to get shorter and shorter so the Ahi Charipa F2 individual number one um, will be cut down a little bit so that the energy will be concentrated into those three fruits and um, the other individuals of the breeding line will be cut down more um, brutally but uh, in my experience that's uh, the best thing to do in winter those uh, flowers that were still left on would not produce anything uh, and I'm not planning to apply much of artificial lighting because uh, I'm not a fan of artificial light. I like the uh, natural light even if it comes uh, through rainy clouds it's better. But this individual uh, started to produce fruits and uh, today I looked at it and I realized that one of the three fruits it had produced uh, starts to turn red and I didn't even tell it any dirty jokes or something uh, so I guess it's a sign that it's ripening and I, I did not apply any artificial lighting or anything so maybe uh, this plant is especially suited for uh, shorter days, shorter uh, vegetation periods could be, could be, could be just uh, uh, good luck um, doesn't have to be uh, anything in the genetics of this individual however uh, this one is of course very dear to me and I'm excited to taste test those fruits with the caveat that uh, it might not be at the peak of taste and heat because uh, well the days were short and uh, well not cold uh, it was uh, normal room temperature inside um, I had this individual uh, also outside for a long period but I took uh, this one in uh, earlier than the um, Cariolokia Streeper Strain Zero F2 so um, maybe in a few weeks uh, I will do a taste test of, about this individual and uh, I'm very interested in how it will turn out but so far um, I have still this this one this was the last fruit that I picked off um, this year the other fruits that I harvested have already uh, dried out a bit and are a bit shriveled and uh, so no good um, so they're no good anymore for real taste testing uh, of uh, fresh fruits uh, I will have to wait until they are completely dried and then maybe I will do a taste test on dried fruits perhaps um, I didn't do much taste testing this year because I had other things to do and uh, sometimes I just couldn't afford to uh, uh, have a little nuclear meltdown happening in my digestive tract when I'm uh, sitting in an online meeting or something so um, I did not perform very many taste tests so um, this one will be my punishment one of those uh, boring little orange ones it was uh, picked off from the Cariolokia Screeper Strain Zero individual number two it was uh, as I said the last one that I picked off this year there are some still left on the plants but I guess they will not uh, ripen anymore because there was still quite little um, in contrast to the uh, Ahi Charipa F2 because those fruits are almost ripe now so um, this one is also already a bit nasty and uh, squishy but um, this will be my punishment for not doing enough taste tests this year my guess is that this will um, be 
not very hot, not not the level of uh, say Bujolokia, Bud for example. I guess it will be below it, and the taste. Um, well, uh, I think no habanero taste, which I um, dislike this peachy soapy thing, um, but um, not especially tasty either. So it's uh, probably a bad idea uh, to do this uh, here out with no ice cream or anything in case it's still hotter than expected but uh, it should be my punishment right okay first few bites there was absolutely no heat but then suddenly whoosh, a quick explosion of heat but not not very much I guess maybe have a narrow level and the taste is boring uh, almost like normal bell pepper but a little bit more fruity and now <clears throat> the heat is concentrated in one little part of my throat but it's not too bad I guess it's just a little bit angry that I called it boring okay you're not boring Now it's <clears throat> maybe somewhat above habanero. <laughs> wow, um, that's nasty, Jen. It's just concentrated on one little part. Not so nice. Yes, I have under uh, underestimated it, but it will not uh, enter my breeding program. This will be reserved to number three and number four of the Cariolokia Screepa Strain Zero breeding line. I have two, and uh, the Ahi Sharipa F2. Well, there's only one individual with nearly ripe, ripened fruits, so I cannot say which one of those specimens that I have. It, it's uh, 11 specimens, I think, um, so far. Um, but this breeding line will definitely be continued, and um, I'm not quite sure how exactly. Maybe I will cross number three and number four of the Cariolokia Screeper Strain Zero. F2, or maybe I will cross the Ahi Charipa F2 directly with the um, Cariolokia Screepa Strain Zero breeding, breeding line, something like that. But uh, I think this will be an excellent mix. And then uh, there's, of course, also my um, Good Luck Chili Pepper, which is a rather complicated cross of uh, multiple different chili varieties. And I um, think uh, in the end I will cross it also into the end result of my breeding program, just uh, to a small extent for sentimental purposes and perhaps it will be the female line, the uh, mother of uh, the final result, so to speak, so that the chloroplasts and um, mitochondria and the like, other plastids also, uh, will be from the good luck chili pepper, but uh, we shall see. It's not not a must have, but a nice to have. Okay, I um, think I have rambled on enough, and I think that should be all. 
Well then, this is Peppers and Glowworms, signing off.